How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP video. In this video, we are going to continue talking about JIT.gen. That's right, this is the JIT.gen tutorial part 2. And in this video with JIT.gen, we are going to talk about its secret weapon, the sample object. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? I have this part already set up, uh, same setup we always use. We have a JIT.world with those attribute settings. Here's our window. We have a video plane so we can see things in that window. And we are sending this uh, b-ball video, which is a default Max MSP video. You can click on the video icon right here and pull that out and we are passing it through a jit.gen object i also sent the message volume zero so it's not going to make any sound while i talk and it's on loop so we can just press play and it's going to just loop this b-ball video over and over now on to the fun stuff let's double click on jit.gen to open up its sub patch and like i said in the last video this is the default setup for the jit.gen sub patch we're just adding inlet one to inlet two but we don't want to do that this time we are going to get rid of the inlet two we are going to take the plus object and we are going to turn that into a sample object and this um object uh it's kind of simple and it's kind of complicated all at the same time but in its most basic basic function what it does is it's going to sample the matrix coming in on the left inlet and it's going to wrap that to the matrix that goes in to the right inlet. So if we just add a norm object in here real quick, you'll see it's pretty much the exact same. And what we're doing is we're just sample sampling this b-ball video and wrapping it to the norm coordinates, which as we said in the last video too, is from zero to one on our X and Y dimension. So it is mapping each pixel of the b-ball video to the appropriate, uh, pixel based on that coordinate system and thus we get the original video um, but sample has a lot of fun cool features in it um, we can change the attribute bound mode uh, similar to jit.rota and we'll type in mirror and now this will mirror it in that same sort of style we just have to go beyond the edge of that zero to one coordinate system so if we change norm to s norm which is negative one to one we'll see we now get this sweet mirroring effect and that is because we're going from negative one to zero so that is mapped this way like you can imagine this uh quadrant here uh that's negative one to zero that's how it would be mapped and then we have the normal quadrant over here in this corner um which is from zero to one respectively and this is uh you know zero to one from negative one to zero so that's why it's like also upside down but you know on the, a different axis in the x direction so hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of see from this um how that mirror mode works the other uh settings we have clamp which again similar to the jit.rota if it's outside the bounds it's going to clamp it and stretch that pixel and then there's also wrap which um is basically the same as bound mode too we just wrap the original video around into each quadrant so we get four uh normal corners that's pretty pretty clear um we're going to go back to the mirror bound mode because honestly i just think that looks pretty cool and um like i had said sample is just sampling the left inlet matrix to whatever we put in the right inlet so we can actually create really complex coordinate systems for the sample object to sample and we can do that with the vec object that we learned about in the last video so if i create actually we only need two in this instance if i create a vector object with two inlets we can think of this as our x and y coordinate points and then i'm going to take this uh, s norm here we're going to patch the vector in instead and you'll notice that it's freaking out right now because uh I, it's a matrix coordinate system of all zero so it's just taking one pixel of our original video and now sampling that to the every single zero which is why it looks like one giant flashing color that's okay we're gonna we're gonna fix that real fast we're gonna say swizz x and swizz out the x direction of our s norm object patch that into the first uh vector input and you see we now have the x coordinates back so that's cool and we're gonna swizz out the y now and we're gonna patch that into the y and you see we now have reconstructed the original video this setup right here is the exact same as just patching the s norm directly in but the reason we are doing this is because we can now modify our x and y coordinates separately to do fancier things um so let's let's try something like uh adding in an abs 
object, which will give us the absolute value. So rather than going from negative one to one, we're gonna go from one to zero, then back up to one. So we'll just patch that in right there. Uh, let's do that here too. And um, nothing quite drastically different, but we can always do things to break this. We can like patch that one into there. And then you'll see that is in fact incredibly drastically different. Let's patch this one in there. Mm, I don't like that as much. We're gonna get rid of that. Go back to this, this one is fine. Um, that looks pretty cool because now we have this awesome diamond shape. Uh, so let's take that and let's just multiply the entire vector output by two. And you'll see we get even more diamonds. If we increase this value to three, even more diamonds. So you know, there's a lot you could play with right there aesthetically. I'm gonna leave it at multiply two for now. Uh, that seems like a nice balance. And then we're gonna bring in the param object, which we also talked about in the last video. This lets us add in our own parameters. We just need to give it a name and some sort of like initial value. So I'm gonna call it offset and it's gonna start at zero. And if we just create a addition object and put the parameter name in there, offset, it's going to link to this by the name. So we can now uh, we can now take this vector output, add some sort of offset to it, and then add that to the multiply two. And then we're gonna, it's gonna add some sort of animation in this sequence. We just have to go back to our main max window and we have to create the message, which I'm going to do actually using the prepend object. You see it says add a message in front of the input. So it's the same thing as doing a message with the variable in it. Um, this is just a little bit easier in my opinion. So we're gonna add the prepend into the jit.gen object. So it, whatever we pass through this object will have the offset message in front of it. And then we're gonna use the object jit.time, which syncs with our jit.world and just outputs a steady float value as if it was counting. Um, and you see now we are adding this value um, into our jit.gen, which is creating this cool animation. Um, and let's just say we wanted it to go the other direction. All we got to do, multiply by negative one. I'm going to patch that into the jit.time and the jit.time through that out into the offset. And if I could actually put it in the right inlet, um, then it would look much better. There we go. Okay, so that is a pretty cool effect, um, but it doesn't have to end here. There's still so much more we could do with the jit.gen in the sample object. Say, what if we wanted to attach it to another sample? This is possible, however, it requires a neat little trick. Uh, you can't just take this sample object and patch that into the left inlet of, the, of another sample object. You see, it's not letting me actually do that. We can patch it into the right inlet, no problem, but it just, for whatever reason, doesn't like to go into the left inlet. Um, but there's a way around this. Actually, there is a very fun way around this. All we have to do is create another jit.gen object. And if we patch this jit.gen through that jit.gen out into this video plane, double click that one to open it, um, we have that sample object output going through this jit.gen patch cord into this jit.gen patch cord. And then we can make the uh, object in here, a sample object, and it's gonna work. You see it is attached and it stays attached and it likes that. We just need to normalize this here now. And you see, we have reconstructed our original video. So we're back to the diamond. Um, we could do something now. We could like another bound mode. Let's add another mirror bound mode in there. And let's change this norm to an S norm. And there we go. That is a pretty cool effect. We could even, you know, continue to mess around with this coordinate system. Let's just multiply it by two. And wow, that's a lot of diamonds. <laughs> and that's a pretty cool effect. And you see, I did this all just using the sample object and a little bit of math. So hopefully that makes the sample object pretty clear. Um, it's a very versatile object and you can get a lot of interesting results with it. Um, all you got to keep in mind again is that same thing I said at the very beginning. All it's doing is we're sampling the left inlet and we're wrapping it to the right inlet. You sample the left, you wrap it to the right, um, and we can create all kinds of coordinate systems real fast. I'm also just going to show this. If we go back into the regular jit.gen, let's not even use our S norm coordinate system. Let's just patch in our inlet one, for example. This is the effect we've created if that was our source. Um, and rather than using, you know, our S norm coordinate system, we're just using the pixel values from the video. Um, and it creates this pretty crazy looking effect. And that is honestly very cool. I just wanted to show you could even, you could even do this if you wanted to, you could sample one matrix and wrap it to a completely different matrix. You don't have to use this S norm or any kind of norm coordinate system. However, it does give you pretty cool effects if you do decide to do that, whatever you want. That's the beauty of Max. You can do whatever you want. 
Um, so hopefully that is all very clear and makes sense. If anything it doesn't make sense, please feel free to leave that in the comments down below and I will answer it when I can. Um, if you did learn something, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you guys learned something. And I really appreciate uh, when you guys do that so, so much. Uh, it really means a lot to me. It really helps out the channel. So again, always please th thank you so much if you do do that. Um, and then that, I will see you guys in the next video.